Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Johnson Sunmin Miller. Speech is a really uh, essentially human thing. Um, you know, think about what, um, whenever you see, uh, you know, toddlers or babies or toddlers. It's almost like an instinct to go and and talk to them and it's like entire communities just by instinct gather together to teach children how to talk and uh, speech is so important that we have an entire limb of the eightfold path dedicated to it um, we're, we're you know learning to speak in ways that don't harm ourselves or or other people and uh, and, and i mean it's been one of the most helpful paths for me to to work on uh, at least in terms of, uh, you know, avoiding hurting other people. Um, there's, you know, we all have experience with that. We all know how easy it is to hurt other people with our speech, uh, even unintentionally. In fact, most of the times it's probably unintentional. Um, well, my uh, youngest granddaughter, she was learning to speak. And I don't remember what the circumstance was, what she was doing or or trying to say or whatever. I, or I asked her a question and I said, um, what's your favorite color? And I immediately regretted it. Because think about what I was asking this, I don't know, she was two, three, three years old at the time. Think about what I was asking her to do. I was asking her to um, abandon that moment, abandon whatever it was that she was doing, whatever she was absorbed in, and instead uh, getting her to think about colors she had seen in the past, their names and designations, um, oh, and you know, so ignoring what was in front of her, I was asking her to uh, create self and other. You know, she is I, and then the colors are other. Um, to judge, she has to come up with some way of, of judging whether you know this one is better than that one, this one makes her feel better than that one, or whatever. And then to create a story about herself that, oh, I am a person who prefers this color. Um, and you know, think about, especially as kids, this idea of favorites can be, or, or be really strong, you know, favorite animals and become a, a thing that gets attached to you. You know, here's a story. These are, you know, our, um, uh, uh, samskara, our, you know, these habit patterns or volitions, you know, help, I was helping to help cultivate that inner to identify a favorite color and kind of stick with that. Like, oh, that's mine. Um, so those are, by asking her that simple question, that's what I was, all those things I was asking her to do. Um, then what do, I, what do we do in our Zen practice? You know, we try to shed stories about ourselves, shed those habit patterns. Um, we try to um, abandon judgment and preference, um, shed a, a sense of having an essential self that, that I as this hard and fast thing, uh, a sense of separation from others. And we try to be present, we just stick with what's right in front of us, right? Um, so I was asked, by asking her a question, I was trying to get her to do the exact opposite of everything that I'm trying to do with my Zen practice. You know, um, but what was it that I was actually really trying to communicate with her? Uh, what I was really trying to say to her when I asked that question was, I love you. I'm interested in what you think and feel. I wanna help you learn to express yourself, to express your, your joys and your needs. You know, but kids take language literally. You know, she had no idea that those were the things I was saying to her. Um, and why should she have thought anything other than I was asking her what her favorite color is. I was demanding that she figure out a favorite color and tell me. Um, because I certainly didn't say, I love you, I'm interested in you, and I want to help you learn to express yourself. Um, and so this, so here, I, there's all this love that I was putting into my question. And yet it wasn't bright speech. Um, well, so since then, I don't, I don't talk about favorites anymore. I never raised that that question. Um, you know, but what? But you have to say something, right? Um, so what? Um, and, and kids have to develop a clear sense of self. That's just healthy. Just to even learn to protect themselves from other people, uh, to define, you know, me versus others, 
so that they can um, learn to protect uh, their, their bodies and to assert themselves, to learn to say no. And that's really important for kids to, to learn. Um, and, you know, just saying, hey, I love you and I'm interested in you. I mean, that, I'm not sure that is enough. So, um, so what should I have? What sort of things yeah, at that moment should I have been saying? Anybody have any ideas? Feel free to jump in. What, seriously, what, I mean, what do you, as opposed to, so just make up a scenario where she's sitting there doing, looking something that would, the equation would come up, what is your favorite color? What would be the better thing to say? Uh, yeah, Robert? Well, one, one thing that occurs to me, not necessarily having a substitute for that question, but rather than have an agenda and have something on your mind that you wanted to ask her about, just go to her and say, what have you been doing? What are you interested in? You know, what, what are your activities? Tell me what you care about. Kind of finding out what she's about rather than what you want to know. Yeah. Or even in that moment, whatever she's doing, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are you doing? How are you feeling? What's happening with you? You know? Yeah. Um, uh, any other ideas? I think it depends on the situation because sometimes just uh, being there and then smiling at them and then just sitting with them is enough rather than words, you know, just because, and then they spontaneously bring up the conversation. Mm -hmm. You don't have to make the first move. It depends on the situation, actually. Yeah, right. And of course, that should be essential to right speech, right? That we're paying attention to the situation, right? And what's appropriate in one situation is not in the other. And, and being present, right? As, as you're saying, just being, basically what you're saying is be present with them. Yeah. Um, well, it's, an, it's interesting to think of approaching the other person um, with openness and a connection to them and, and that sense of non-separateness so that you don't have to approach them as me saying something to you. I think what Melintho is saying also is like that to see, you know, how you're connected and what's going on and let it arise out of that when you do yeah. speak. Yeah. And right speech might be saying nothing. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, so that, that's all great stuff. Yeah. Um, and, uh, let's see this, um, but again, just go back to the point, you know, good intentions isn't an, enough for, uh, for right speech. You know, again, this example, I had all the love in the world and, you know, it's probably not, now, I didn't give her any psychological complexes with this question, I suppose, you know, about her favorite, you know, color. I wasn't like saying anything uh, horribly abusive that would be a better example of wrong speech. Um, but nonetheless, it was, it, despite all the love, it was perhaps not right speech. Um, and, uh, but yet it was also very useful speech for me. You know, you have to speak. You can't just become paralyzed and, and not say anything. And so as part of this, I think is also just accepting our, uh, our mistakes. You know, it was a really shocking moment to me to hear those words come out of my mouth. And uh, really struck me. I, I immediately knew as the words were coming out of my mouth what I was doing. And I obviously reflected on that and, and it's affected how I continue to speak. And so, um, um, so speak, make mistakes, accept the mistakes learn from them. You know, it's like when we're sitting in, in meditation, thoughts arise, you recognize them, let them go, and go back to your breath or whatever it is that you're paying attention to. Um, instances of wrong speech, they're just like the, those thoughts arise, acknowledge them, let them go, and uh, go, back to, go back to what's in front of us. Thank you. <laughs>